Good morning, Glue Troopers. Hope everybody's doing well. I got up this morning and said, you know, after waking up from the birthday cake coma, I don't think I'm going to do a morning video. And I hopped on the computer and Mike Machette had put out a new video on aircraft shapes. And I was like, ooh, you have my attention. And after watching it, and by the way, he gave this channel a shout out. So Mike, thanks for that. And in return, guys, if you haven't checked out Mike's channel, Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machette, please do. Well, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the video, which I always enjoy Mike's videos. But with the sole exception of the three airliner plan views together, which I didn't have enough time to figure out which was which. I was pondering that one when he gave us the answer because I had too much pride to pause the computer. I got every single aircraft correct. And I was so proud of myself. And then I realized something. The reason I knew all the general aviation aircraft for the most part was because I spent most of my life working around general aviation aircraft. Airliners, of course, well, I fly, but there are only a few, really, only a few airliners in service these days. But all of the other aircraft, except for the Army helicopters, which I also served in, all of the Century Series and aircraft and World War II aircraft, I realized I recognized them right away from years of building models of them. And I started thinking about how the shape of an aircraft determines whether or not you're going to buy it. You know, some people buy models for historical value. Somebody, some people buy them because of uh, maybe personal attachment to it. But a lot of people, just how cool they look. You know, the paint job is important. But also, the simple fact is, some aircraft, the shape of them, just look cool. It was a lot of fun because I realized the very tight relationship between my ability to spot aircraft and building models. I mean, those two things are joined at the hip. And the same, same, I'm sure, for a lot of guys who build model cars. I'm sure a lot of car builders have built model cars that they have never really seen in real life or certainly never owned or seen on a regular basis. But because they build models of them, they can spot them. I would think that would especially be the case for cars from the 30s and 40s and 50s that most folks have never owned and tend to have somewhat similar body designs, but if you built a bunch of models of them, oh, no, no, the headlight's there, the fender's there, the, the door handle's there, I know that car because you built a model of it. And it made me think about your ability to identify something because of your background in model building. And that was just really cool. I enjoyed that immensely. And, of course... <laughs> he also points out that it takes a great artist to uh, break the rules and get away with it. He went straight to my favorite box artist, Jack Linwood, my favorite box art, the Mark I Spitfire. And I had, as soon as he had mentioned there are certain views you never show in box art if you want to show action, it, it, even before the uh, he showed the box, I thought, wait a minute, I know a couple of box arts where, where that was done. And he covered the very box arts I was thinking about. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's great. That is awesome. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun with this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I'm just going to throw up a couple of random box arts to some music uh, that are not only some of my favorites, but uh, I think you guys will understand when you see these box arts. Well, that explains why, you know, folks who build models can identify things. It's just that familiarity. And that was just what was, uh, well, running through my mind this morning after watching that fantastic video. Well, guys, take care of yourselves. I hope you're having a wonderful day and model on.